in the comments on the last series, I was like, oh wow, people actually understand what we're trying to do. So I feel less nervous now. But then I also do feel nervous because we've now gone on to like more difficult subjects. It's like less like who your role models, more like how do you feel about your penis, which is like... <laughs> <laughs> So after season one, we asked viewers what they wanted us to look at in season two. And a lot of men got in touch and said, can you look at masculinity through sport? I thought that MMA and the Ultimate Fighting Championship would be a really interesting place to go and look at masculinity. This journey has taken me to New York, meeting all the fighters <laughs> and the fans. And just going to an event I never thought I'd go to. But we started that journey in Nottingham. Darren Till is a British fighter from Liverpool and one of the best known guys on the card for the UFC 244 event. Having lost his last two fights, there's a lot riding on his upcoming matchup in New York. Welcome everyone to UFC Gym Nottingham. Big open workout, big day for the gym, big day for Darren, big fight for Darren. I hand it over to the superstar for his open workout. The open workout is an opportunity for the press to get shots of the fighters in action and to put questions to them before the event. I caught up with Darren after his presser. What is it about UFC that makes it so popular with men? When it's all sh sh like stripped down, it sort of goes back to like the gladiator days. The cage door gets locked and we sort of fight for the death. It's got to be the biggest fight in combat sport out there. People that don't follow it, do you think that they misunderstand what it's about? Yeah, I think people who could just watch it for the first time and see all blood and elbows getting thrown, they can be like, oh, that's what... You know what I mean? But then when you look into to it more and understand how much skill is involved, I think you become a fan. Lots of people did say to me, because it's like mixed martial arts, it's like the best of the best because anything goes. So if you've got every art in this world, martial art, and put them together, who's the best? I'm nearly there. Yeah? Nearly. I heard you a bit arrogant. You didn't sound that arrogant when you said that. Someone, someone told me, they were like, oh, you've seen Darren Till, he's a little bit arrogant. Was, that was very... Chinese whispers in a bit. <laughs> people putting me down, man. I'm a little bit arrogant. A nice arrogant. So I'm here in New York for the UFC 244 event. There's a bunch of different things happening in the few days leading up. There's going to be a, an open workout. There's a media day. There's going to be a lot of opportunity to speak to guys who are following MMA and UFC. You know, what is it that people, particularly men, find in this sport that they don't find elsewhere? The open workout in Madison Square Garden was in front of hardcore fans who had been drawn out to see their favourite fighters ahead of the event on Saturday. We're not really sure how this works. <laughs> Everybody is saying that this isn't usually how they do an open workout, that they've never seen this before, they've never seen people bring out people who are usually what's supposed to happen is he's supposed to like do some training, do a warm up and answer some questions from the media. We just shouldn't do the shit all night if we didn't know what's happening. Yeah, but do you think they're insured for this? What's that? Do you think they're insured for this? Nah, I don't know. <laughs> After that slightly bizarre display, Masvidal was whisked off to do his presser and I decided to shoot my shot and ask him a question. A lot of people have said to me that fighting is a primal instinct that all men have. Do you believe that to be true? Do you think that all men have that inside them? Men and women. Survival, it's, it's everything, you know? We are, we're animals, a lot of us. Some of us more animals than others, you know? But I just feel that everybody has it in them. Men, women, anybody, you know? If you, if you need to survive, if you're fighting for that last bologna sandwich, it's gonna come out of you, you know? Might not be good at it, but everybody can fight, you know? Thank you. Thank you. I wanted to get some context for what I'd seen at the open workout, so I grabbed ESPN's Ariel Hawani, who has been covering the sport since 2006. The stereotype is that UFC is really popular with kind of guys that are just super aggressive and violent. That stigma is, is prehistoric. That guy wearing a suit is an MMA fan. Celebrities are MMA fans. The president is an MMA fan. Like, it's never going to be everyone's cup of tea. But in 26 years, enough people 
from every walk of life like the sports where I think it's a lot more diverse than maybe someone who isn't a fan might think. In this moment, right, this week when the fight is about to happen, how much of that do you think people consume for pure entertainment? And how much of that do you think taps into something deeper, particularly for men? There are elements of WWE in this, you know, the showmanship, the characters, but there's also this emotional investment that they have in these guys. You know, he's going into battle and I'm going to battle with him. And there's also a part where you're almost living vicariously through this guy. They're superhuman in my opinion. These guys and girls have something in them that you and I don't possess. After speaking to Ariel, I wanted to chat to fans directly to hear what they liked about UFC. So I headed to Legends Bar, where a live radio show was being recorded with UFC fighter and commentator Dan Hardy. What do you like about sport? We fight every day, you know, we fight to stay in our job, get paid, get through the days. So watching someone push through just getting beat on, and then when they come on top, to me that's it's a rush. I, more than any other sport, find a lot of attraction to the actual individual fighter. A guy like Nick Diaz, you get to see his personality before he gets in the ring, and you get to see him be that personality in the ring. You can get the richest person in the world. He can pay for the best trainers, the best everything since he's 12 years old. And he wouldn't be the champion of the world. There's something about them that's just missing that I think people are drawn to that we can't really relate to them. This is the ultimate media day, which is the Thursday before the Saturday fight. Quite fun, just to kind of see how it all works. This is nuts, it's like, choose your fighter. I need to go around and find my favourite looking one to ask questions to. In the end, I decided to speak to Kelvin Gastelum, who is Darren Till's opponent on Fight Night. What is it about UFC as a, and MMA as a kind of sport that attracts you to that? I think there's so much fake stuff going around in the world today that people are looking for genuine, genuine entertainment, something pure, something real. What is it that pushes you and kind of makes you want to do this? I grew up in Arizona. Um, my family came from Mexico a long, long time ago. And so we were a very poor family growing up. All I know is hard work, you know. That's the immigrant mentality is we got to work for what we, what we want. You know, nothing's ever been handed to us. Do you think that links with UFC? We all come from different backgrounds and different upbringings. What makes us all the same is, is that. That kind of striving? Yeah. Everybody's on the other side of this wall, uh, <laughs> trying to get lines from uh, Nate Diaz. But I've managed to find Dan hanging around the back here. Are you okay, hon? <laughs> Everyone watching this is going to think I don't know how to use a spoon. <laughs> Why is she talking to this guy? He's not even figured out cutlery. What is it about this that you think appeals to so many men across the board? Every man, as we're talking about masculinity, falls on that spectrum of wild animal, civilised human being. Some of us have got a bit more wild animal than others, and that wild animal needs to manifest in some ways. Why is it suddenly gone quiet? Uh, face-offs. Does that mean they just look at each other? Yeah, <laughs> just look at each other. I just want to see what's going on over there, yeah. and then we can come back and sit down. He does it every time, it's, it's just his thing. So it's like, it's like a catwalk for fighters? A little bit. More of a lion walk than a catwalk. A lion walk yeah. than a catwalk, right. Yeah, these guys are sizing each other up. They're ready to do battle. Have you made that joke them. before? No. Really? That's pretty good. Was it? Yeah, off the cuff. But you were just saying about how you think society needs to take martial arts yeah. more seriously. I don't think we fully understand and appreciate as a, as a society how important combat sports is. Every single person on this fight card, if they didn't have a space for that animalistic side of them to manifest, it, it would have manifested somehow. It would have manifested in a negative relationship or a negative marriage. I mean, I, I think we should be encouraging more people to get involved in combat sports because I feel like if you can separate that part of yourself away from your regular life, it's not going to manifest in your real life. Headline fighter Jorge Masvidal didn't turn up for his face-off, but he did give the media some sound bites. No matter what your views are on Trump as a president, the guy's a bad motherfucker, man. I managed to get him by himself to follow up with a few questions of my own. I was asking you if, like, aggression and the need to fight and be competitive is kind of innate in all men. It's not a trick question, it's not like anything like that. Shit. How like much the... time do we got? Like... How much time do you want to give me? <laughs> Let me sit down. Let me try. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Masculinity and men fighting. Serious shit. 
why would they pick me to answer that? That's so weird. <laughs> Cheeky fella. Um, I think I said yesterday, men and women have it, but men obviously more because it's in our nature, you know. Me in particular, I think my bloodline comes from the guy. It was maybe uh, not the smartest or didn't care to be the smartest. He was just hanging out in the village. And then when other villagers came to invade, he knocked on the door and said, hey, man, we got these guys trying to invade. We need your skill set. OK, he got out there, took care of business, went about his day. The world back then was ruled by, by men like me. And then shit happened and fucking uh, laws came into place and police. And all these types of stuff that allow like weak betas and people with too much opinion to take over, but fighting isn't everybody, you know? When I came to that event, it was interesting for me because I was like, it was a lot more underground than I thought it would be. You brought people on the stage who were not fighters and you got them to fight. What was it that you wanted to do? We're gonna have fun. These guys are gonna fucking throw blows and I'm gonna make the UFC sweat the balls off. They're gonna be like, no, this is a huge liability. But I just wanted them to have fun. I wanted me to have some fun and, and have a good time. That's it. It's like Fight Club. Fight Club, yeah, my own fight, the Game Bird Fight Club. Today is, is the weigh-in. It's Friday night in New York. This is completely really packed. Durandini. There's so many people in here. Dana White just come out on stage. Apparently, The Rock's going to come out in a second. And, now, and I can't lie, I'm quite excited to see how it plays out. He has a Make America Great cap on, and he's holding Donald Trump's son's book triggers. The drama. So they've just done the presser for the next event, USC 245. The theatrics, it was nuts. Yeah, I, come, I, I, I just don't know what to make of it, it's mad. And now for the ceremonial weigh-in for UFC 244, here is Joe Rogan. Throughout the days leading up to the fight, I got a pretty good idea of a number of different reasons as to why MMA is so popular with so many men. I turned up to the event on Saturday, excited to see what the atmosphere would be like. So basically, you just tell me what it is you like about UFC. It's like the blood, you know, punching all that. I like when people get rocked. It's like. I don't know, it gets me like goosebumps. Who are you looking to see? Who are you uh, most I'm interested? going for Nate Diaz, but I'm a fan of Jorge too. So. Why is Nate Diaz so popular? Everybody's saying Diaz. Diaz. It's, Everyone's just, saying. it's just the gangster in them, like everybody likes it. I'm watching someone who's an artist paint a picture. They take their skill pretty seriously and they can, uh, they've got knockout power. That's what everyone's here for, to see a knockout. And I think boxing's kind of played out. This is more fun. This is, uh, you get a lot more action. Okay, cool, It's cool. a combination of theater and athleticism. Yes. What's The Guardian's view on UFC? The Guardian generally doesn't cover it. I'm gonna go in, we're not allowed to take our cameras with us um, next to the Octagon, so we're gonna be shooting on our mobile phones.
I've learned a lot these past few days. I feel like there's a lot to be taken away about UMT and what that says around where we're at, especially when it comes to masculinity, for sure. We're going to have to unpack all of this layout. is on the line. Here the doctor's it? waving it off. No way. What? Wow. No way. Dana White immediately out of no his way. seat. Gentlemen, due to the laceration of Nate Diaz's eye by TKO, the winner of the BMF belt, Jorge Gabriel Masvidal. The gate was uh, six point six million dollars. Yeah. <laughs> when we first bought this company, venues didn't want us. And uh, at that time, Trump reached out and asked us to come to the Taj Mahal. Everything that ever happened to me in my career, Trump was the first guy to pick up the phone and reach out to me. And I don't care where you sit politically, the President of the United States was here tonight at our event. We weren't allowed here a few years ago. Oh, Rough week. <laughs> no matter what any fighter will ever tell you, they, they will be scared. If they tell you they're not, it's, 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 it's a blatant lie. But this fight, I wasn't scared. I was terrified. Coming off the losses I was coming off and how invincible I thought I was before that. I know I'm still the greatest, but I know I've got to work at that. It's been a long year, so we're just going to have a drink before you guys start barking. I haven't eaten either, so. Oh, well. That's good pizza. As far as uh, painting my Picasso, I almost got to do it, you know? I don't want no, nothing to take my greatness to say some guy tripped on the pebble and that's how I beat him. That's not me. I want to end him. I want to send him off to another dimension. I got nothing but respect for the dude, but that's the type of artwork I like to do. I love the fucker belt. I'd rock that shit. I'd wear that out in public, maybe. MMA and UFC is operating on multiple levels. I think linked to masculinity, it's fascinating. There's the athleticism, there's the kind of art of it, right? There's the entertainment, there's the spectacle, there's the kind of show. I did find it bizarre when Trump turned up. At the press conference afterwards, they were all like, oh, you know, the president was here. And that, it, that is a statement. And it's also that thing of it being like, not a politically correct space, a place where you know, rules are broken and you can, if you're frustrated, there's like a, an outlet. And I know a lot of people aren't very sympathetic to that idea, but people don't like rules. And this sport, like, really kind of captures that energy. Dismissing a sport because Trump was there or dismissing a sport because it's violent or whatever, it kind of um, misses out, like, everything else that's going on around this. And it will continue to grow and be a very popular sport. It did better than the boxing the other day on pay-per-views. You know, it, people do like this. You've got to be involved in the conversation uh, and, you know, understand these things. Don't know how you follow on from this and Trump and UFC and Maz Vidal and Nate Diaz's face, but uh, if you want to see what we do next, like, comment and subscribe. And, uh, yeah, you'll stay up to date with the next episode of Modern Masculinity. <laughs> so corny. <laughs>